Good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday. We're doing a spooky themed painting tonight with Brush by Brandy. My name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artisan behind Brush by Brandy. Tonight, we're going to be painting by candlelight. So grab the one that you love, grab a paintbrush, and let's paint together. Um, if you guys are watching the news, you guys may have heard I'm in Northern California and they have all the power to a million people in Northern California because there was wind in the forecast yesterday, which we never saw, by the way. Um, so I'm currently without power. So can you guys see okay? We're painting by candlelight tonight. Um, I'm just kidding. Sean, can you open the door? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's really dark in here. Okay, I really do have no power, but I do have a little bit of daylight left. Thankfully, we get we still have daylight left. So, but since we are still going to paint by candlelight with my candle here, um, I think it would be fun to tell all of our worst painting stories. Like, what is your painting catastrophe, painting horror stories by candlelight tonight? So anyway, um... Tonight, I'm going to be doing some painless painting. So you guys may have noticed um, on a few of the Thinks About Lives this week, we've been talking about painless painting. And what that is, is to get back to the beauty of a simple paint finish. And this is something I really appreciate because I feel like as a brand ambassador, we have the challenge or we put it on ourselves maybe of trying to one up ourselves every time um, to get your finishes better and better and more complicated and try something new and try something different. And we forget that there is just genuine beauty in a simple single color paint finish. Um, and so I'm extremely grateful to get back to that a little bit because I know there's a market for it. Customers still love a single color paint finish. Um, and I want to talk to you just about some basics of putting on a really clean, simple paint finish. So I'm going to blow my candle out right here because it's a fire hazard. Um, and these are the nightstands I'm working on tonight. Hold on, do that again because I think there was a gust of wind. Yeah. I think that's how it blew up. <laughs> oh, oh. No, I'm serious, you guys. They turned our power out. I had to drive into Sacramento last night to pick up Sean at the airport. Sacramento is about 40 minutes away, and they had wind, but we never got it up here in the hills, and we are the ones that went without power. Sacramento never went without power, and they're not PG&E. So don't Did even you pay the bill? me. <laughs> Hang on, you guys. I got to go for a minute. I'll be right back. Um, so these are the nightstands I'm working on tonight, and I love, love, love this style. This is America and a Martinsville, which is a brand of furniture, and they're super sturdy, solid wood, really cute. They've got some really bold gold hardware that I'm going to put on here, and I love them in just a clean, simple navy finish. And then I'm going to take advantage of the fact that they were white underneath, and I'm going to distress a little bit. Once my paint is dry, I will distress a little bit down to the white. And I'll have a two-tone paint finish with just a really simple, clean coat of Dixie Belle paint. So this is what I'm starting out with here. I've already cleaned my piece with Dixie Belle White Lightning, which is a granulated product. And I take it here and I dissolve it into a spray bottle um, and clean my piece. And then I take water and I will rinse any cleaning residue off of my piece. So these have been cleaned really well. Um, I don't feel like these need a primer, but if you feel like your piece has any sort of like glossy finish on it, you can just take a sanding sponge and give it a little bit of bite. Just take that sheen off of your piece and that will give your paint something to grip onto. So this is just, um, I'm just giving it a fine sanding coat. And that just gives my paint something additional to bite onto. And then I'm going to take my Dixieville paint. So this is in the navy, and I love in the navy. It's just a really um, beautiful, classic color. Um, and I'll start laying my paint on. On a base coat, I do try to pay attention to my brush strokes as much as possible. Because this is going over white, it's going to take me two coats to do this. I'm going to dig it into these crevices on my drawer, and I'm just paying attention to my brush strokes. I don't want to have any globs in the corners. Um, I'm using my Dixie Belle mini brush. I love the mini for laying paint on. Um, it just lays paint on really, really well. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this drawer out because when I'm doing a first coat, I normally would pop my drawers out, especially because I'm not blending on the front of them. So I can take this out and continue to lay my first coat on here. Making sure I get coverage everywhere. If I feel like my paint is starting to stick, I can take my mister bottle. If it's starting to set up and I'm not done yet, I can take my mister bottle and just lay a little bit of water on and then I will smooth my brush strokes out. Just really with a soft hand, I will feather right across the front of my paint. Dixie Belt is self-leveling, but you have to give it a good start. So I think that just gives you a really clean coat of paint. And then I like to come in here and on my edges of my drawers, like this right here, I will take the side of my brush and I'm just gonna hit that. And that gives me a nice clean line. I'm just using the natural line of the drawer so I don't have to tape anything off. And that gave me a clean line there. Same thing across the top of the drawer. I, so let's see, how long has our power been off? Uh, we're at 48 hours right now, you guys. Two days for absolutely no reason. You don't wanna get me started on this, I promise you. <laughs> Two days for absolutely no reason. We never had wind, never. It was in the forecast. I don't even want to get into like the conspiracy theorists in me and what this could, the ramifications of this being okay. Um, so you know in California, we have a tendency to get fires, um, which then you get into forestry management and all those theories there too. But um, so they thought that, uh, to try to prevent those, they would just start turning our power off every time there's wind in the forecast. Not only are they turning our power off, you guys, but they turned it off 24 hours ahead of the wind, and then it can take them another three days after the wind to go check the lines. But what's interesting to me here is we never had wind, so why do they need to check the lines? It's no longer in the forecast. We never had any, and we still don't have power. I'm not a happy camper right now. Really? Yeah. Um, uh, pg e the utility here in California, recently filed bankruptcy. So I think they're in the we don't care mode right now. We don't care what you think. They also have a monopoly, so we have no other choices. So I'm tipping the edge of my drawer. Let me turn this into the other side. And same thing, I'm going to do the top of my drawer right here. So you guys see me a lot paint with the drawers in on my piece, but when I'm not blending, I really do take the drawers out. And I'll paint with the drawers out. And then I'm gonna show you how far inside of the piece. So once I've I've gone with a vertical brush stroke, I will come back and I just wanna clean those up. I will feather those brush strokes out into a horizontal again. So now these are ready and I can let them dry. So I like to come inside my piece. And I'll finish all the way here. I've got this piece of wood. This is a nice clean line that makes sense for my paint finish to stop. And that way when the drawers are in, you're not gonna see any wood sticking out. So I just give this a very thin coat of paint. Now this is raw wood, it doesn't have any finish on it. So it can tend to suck up paint pretty quickly. A little bit of water will help spread that paint out. And then it's almost like, it's almost like using the paint like a stain into that raw wood. Cause it doesn't take a lot. This is just finishing the inside of my piece. I will wax these drawer glides. These are wooden drawer glides. So I put a coat of wax on those and that keeps your drawer gliding smooth. I do the sides here. So get up under this lip on the top. For a single coat of paint that's in the navy is covering this white finish really well. And then I also, I'm going to lean my uh, piece back up against this piece behind it. And I also like to come get up underneath here and I do up underneath the bottom too. So anything that might be seen on this piece. And it also helps you to see your piece from a different angle and know any spots that you might have missed that you don't realize. I get right underneath that lip with a nice clean line and then right up underneath here. This is also that raw wood, so I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of water. 
to help spread that paint out into the wood. So I told you guys I would talk about my painting horror stories. The best one I can think of is I had a piece and I did it in another paint brand, which shall remain nameless. And um, it ended up not selling. The color wasn't right or it was a very specific color. And so I came back to repaint that piece in Dixieville paint. Um, and what I didn't realize, no, I didn't use Dixie Bell. I used another brand. I used that same other brand at the time. This was before I had fully come on board to realize that uh, I love Dixie Bell for a lot of reasons. So I used the other brand of paint and I went over top of my existing finish. I wanna hear your guys' horror stories too, by the way. Um, and when I came back to my paint finish, it literally peeled off in sheets, almost like a latex paint, but this was not a latex paint. Um, and I have never had that happen before, never. And that forever has scarred me from using this other brand of paint. Um, it was an absolute nightmare. I literally had to strip the piece back down to bare wood. And then I came back with Dixie Belle, actually with in the Navy, <laughs> And I painted it in Dixie Belle paint. And I've used Dixie Belle on hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of pieces. And I have never had my paint peel like that. So this particular paint, you'll notice I don't use it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you don't um, say. Because that was such an awful experience. That is my painting horror story since we're painting by candlelight tonight. We're sitting around the campfire telling our horror stories, right? We all have some. Oh, I've got another one. Oh, good. Here's another one. Story time. Um, you'll like this one. I had done this super cute piece in pink and gray, and we loaded it up to take it to go deliver. Oh, man. Do you know where I'm going with this? Yeah. Yes, I remember. And we had a few, we were delivering a few pieces, right? So there was more than one in the truck. And so we stood it up onto its legs. Usually I transport my pieces laying on their back, but this time we stood it up on its legs and strapped it. And we get out onto the main street from our neighborhood. You guys guess what happened? Yes. Something took flight. Yeah, the piece took flight. Flew out the back of my truck. It wasn't that big. And went to the side of the road. Thankfully, there wasn't a car right behind us. Flew out the back of the truck. It's on the side of the road in pieces. And I'm freaking out. This was a completed piece headed to the new owner's house. And now it's on the road, on the side of the road in pieces. So we stopped, kids in the car, kids in the truck. We stopped reclaimed all the pieces and brought them home. I put that piece back together. I did have to cut a new top to it. Well, by I had to cut, I mean, I had to have Sean cut a new top to it. Um, we put that piece back together. I'll tell you what, it was 10 times better than it was <laughs> to begin with. Originally. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, we reinforced everything since it had fallen apart. We could tell where all the weaknesses were. Thankfully, not a lot of the pieces actually broke. Um, but we were able to piece it back together, reinforce where it needed to be reinforced, and the customer waited through all that. She still wanted that piece. So that was a horror story that turned in uh, turned out okay. I don't think I have any that have not turned out okay. So this is the side of my piece, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm feathering out my brush stroke, super soft hand, almost like a feather duster. And I'm going to clean out this little lip right here because it got a little glob of paint in there. Clean out that lip, same thing down here. Feather out those brush strokes. And get a little bit of water. And get these legs. So I'm tipping my piece up so I can see underneath this lip, I've got a nice clean line. I wanna get underneath these legs here. This is just my first coat of paint, guys. So anything that I miss with this coat, I can perfect with my second coat. We're gonna put a second coat on tonight too. Someone else also had the same uh, experience same with, thing? Paint, with paint. Oh, off in sheets. yeah. 
Um, the only other time I've seen that is a customer brought me a piece that was um, not, it wasn't done by me the first time. It was done by somebody else who had made their own chalk paint. And um, when you make your own chalk paint, you usually use a latex paint as the base. And this paint was just peeling off in sheets. So it's that same like latex, uh, you know, strong acrylic based paints. They just don't have that staying power like Dixie Belle does. Awful, awful, awful experience. Um, I try to avoid stripping pieces down to the bare wood if I can. It's really not, it's, it takes it to a whole nother level. I've had a few customers that want me to do a full, not just refinishing, but, but almost a restoration. Um, I'm getting down to the bottom of my paint, so I usually add a little bit of water down there. And my paint's a little bit thicker because it's the very bottom, so I add a little bit of water to my piece too. And the paint you're using is in the navy. I'm using Dixie Bell paint in the navy. You guys, I'm so sorry I'm losing my daylight. You can tell, I can tell it's getting darker in here. I do have a work light on, but it's only going to get us so much, so it's kind of dark. I don't know how this is translating on camera. Are people complaining that it's dark? Um, no. I'm in Northern California. We have our power shut off. It's been off for two days because we had wind in the forecast. I know. Hold on, wait for it. I know. <laughs> Here comes the opinion. Here stop. we go. I'm trying, I'm oh, trying really man. hard. I'm just gonna stop there. Where's the tape when I need it? My kids' schools have been closed. My kids have had two days off school because there was wind in the forecast. I know, right? Stoplights are out. Businesses are closed. Everybody thinks you're wacky. No, they don't. They know. Um, in entire counties, literally pretty much all of Northern California, a million people right now because there was wind in the forecast. Yep. So now my kid's school will request a waiver from the state, which probably will not be granted. And if so, then they add these on to the end of the school year. They add these dates on to the end of the school year. So of course, what have we done for power? Um, okay. Bicycles and children. Yes. My Put kids, them on there. Yeah. Like little hamster wheels. Yep. Um, no, we actually have a generator. And thankfully, we still have water. We have a water storage tank. We're on a well, so a lot of people with wells, when your well pump doesn't work, you lose water too. Um, so we have a water storage tank. Our house is being fed from that right now. So I've got a clean, clean, clean base coat of paint on here. I can tell, I don't know if you guys can tell, but up close, I can see a little bit of the white peeking through, but it's so minimal that with my second coat of paint, that's gonna disappear. So I'm going to come over here to this piece. Let me move my campfire blanket. <laughs> Somebody asked, how are we cooking and eating? Cooking? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the heck? They have these things huh? called restaurants, right? It's awesome. We went out to dinner last night. That's what we did. It was kind of the kids' treat. They're bored out of their minds. Um, but my kids have been playing so creatively that it's been kind of cool to see. I almost want to write a letter to the schools and show them how my kids are playing. Tell them to go pound sand. We're going to get our kids at home. Yeah, because I think my kids have learned more being home and playing together in the last couple days than they would have been at school. Um, hang on one second, you guys. I'm looking for one of my sanding sponges. Uh, the... I don't see one. This will work. Okay. Thanks okay, for playing. This is the Dixie Bell finishing pad, but it's an abrasive pad. And all I want to use it for is before I put a second coat of paint on, I like to come and just brush my first coat of paint. I'm not trying to remove any of the paint, but I do this in between every single coat, whether it's clear coat or paint. I just brush my piece with a little sanding sponge or this finishing pad works great. It's just an abrasive pad, but it's not abrasive enough that it's going to take any of the paint off. It just takes down any bumps, any dust that might have settled in my paint. Um, so there, sorry, there's questions about how restaurants have power and hospitals. Oh. Hospitals have generators. Restaurants, the locations we've been going to are outside of our area. So, so they're not night, affected, you know, like a block away. They're no, not, no, I'm no just it's not. Our whole county's out. 
Um, so if you, we had to drive last night, I drove into Sacramento, which is about 40 minutes away, but I had to pick Sean up at the airport. So we had to go into Sacramento anyway. So while we were there, we just went and got grabbed dinner. Otherwise, we're eating a lot of sandwiches and cereal right now. Our refrigerator is still doing okay. We do have a generator. Um, thankfully, I hadn't go, gone to Costco recently, so we had no food anyways. Um, the struggle is real. Yeah. <laughs> so note to self, I desperately need to go to Costco when we get power back. So same thing. So I just took down that little bit of grit. And I know you guys can't tell on camera, but I can feel how much smoother my paint feels just by going over that with that little abrasive pad. If I had any drips or anything, I'd want to sand those out. I'm going to tip this up a little bit. Yep. Seems to be your uh, MO. You got a missing uh, leg down there with no paint. Oh, <laughs> I do. And one yeah. on the other one too. So I'll go ahead and hit that. And then when I'm coming around with my second coat, this will have a first coat on it. Tell me again. Did I miss another one? On oh, the other one? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. I'll go back and look for that. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, I have nearly no paint on here right now, so I'm going to grab another container. I also really love painting the green containers. <laughs> Monica says it sounds like us here in Florida after a hurricane. Exactly. But without a hurricane. Exactly. That's the thing. If this was a natural disaster, it's one thing, but this is absolutely voluntary. Tell us how you really feel. Never mind the countless homes that would have generators going that could t potentially cause sparks on their own. Well, not so, just not just sparks. Can I tell a personal story? Uh, am I blowing stuff up again? No, about your dad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, personal to us, Sean's dad actually passed away, what, two years ago? Yeah, it's been yeah, two, two years. years huh? Two years ago from generator fumes. It's CO2. He yeah. had... Um, the generator. He had the generator too close to where he was sleeping and um, and passed away. So very personally, but a gener generators come with their own set of danger. Okay, so something I want to point out here. I used very little paint on this. I dipped my brush one time. I used water. And this is just enough to give me coverage for a second coat. My second coat is a skim coat. It's super thin and I'm just using it to give myself a nice, clean, perfect coat of paint. Same thing, I'm going to feather out those brush strokes so that, so that I can give it everything I can for the self-leveling to work and come out beautifully. What's in your spray bottle? Just water. Just water. Feather out those brush strokes and then I'll come down here to the legs. I can also wet my brush a little bit because I've got paint in my brush still. I don't want barely any paint for this. My coverage is fantastic. And on this piece, I know you can't see, but I've also got up under this rim right here, up under my piece. So if you're laying on the ground, you're not gonna look up and see wood peeking through that I miss painting. These pieces are gonna have stained tops on them. When I'm doing a stained top, I prefer to strip and stain my top prior to doing my paint. Um, the reason is it's much easier, let me get my drawers out of this. It's much easier to get paint off of um, a stained top than it is to try to get wood stain out of a cleanly painted surface. So same thing, I brush these with my um, abrasive sponge. We're losing our daylight here, guys. I'm gonna add some water to this. I've got a super smooth coat. Very, very, very little paint. I guess my level of dedication is uh, shown when there's an excavator calling my name too. Oh, are <laughs> you having a hard time? Yeah, our um, thank you everyone for the comments by the way. Our contractor dropped off their uh, the excavator, so Sean's been out riding the excavator today. Because not only that, but um, he works from home, you guys. So we ran the computer off the generator today, and then his employer was like, "No, this isn't working." Um, you know, just finish up for the afternoon. So businesses are shut down. Um, we have a portable 
portable Wi-Fi device. Otherwise, our Wi-Fi doesn't work. So that's a huge luxury. So Sarah uh, wanted to know about the drawers. Don't you yes. usually leave them in, or is that just for blending? For just blending, exactly, Sarah. So I'm taking them out. This is a single color paint finish. So I'm gonna take them out. And actually, even when I blend a piece, I tell you on camera usually that I blend it on camera, and then I will come back afterwards and take the drawers out and paint around them. So this is a single color. I take my drawers out. No reason to leave them in. So that's a beautiful, really clean coat of paint. You can see the brush strokes, but they'll self-level. Um, and that's wet paint right now. So I'm gonna set that one aside. Same thing here. I'll start out with my water. I've already sanded this down. A little mist of water, a little bit of paint on my brush, just enough to give it coverage. Second coat is always where I'm perfecting my finish. So this is a super simple finish and I'm going to use that white underneath. Same way if, if you've got a piece that has an existing painted finish on it, use that paint color underneath to give yourself a layered look. Take advantage of it, use it as an asset. And I'm gonna use that white as an asset when I distress down, um, you're gonna see that white under here. And I think that's gonna really outline um, the details on this piece. And the color once again. This is Dixie Belle in the navy, which is a really true, pure, rich navy color. Okay, so my drawers are done. A lot of water, very minimal paint. And I just thought of the Oh, I hear a PG&E vehicle. What? Say it ain't so. What, the helicopter? <laughs> oh, better report it. <laughs> Everybody in the yeah. country freaks out. Why is there a helicopter There's above? a joke around here, you guys, because PG&E does fly overhead. PG&E is our utility on this Pacific Gas and Electric. Um, and they do fly overhead to monitor power lines. So every time there's a helicopter, people freak out. Kind of the norm around here. Okay. Same thing on this side. So I've already sanded this. It's nice and smooth. I'm going to give myself a little bit of water to work with. Very minimal paint. Super thin coat of water. And this gives me a beautiful finish. So my second coat is, is just a skim coat. Less is more. Are coming down our driveway? That's the neighbor. Probably telling them to turn this generator off. <laughs> We've been running our generator sparingly. <laughs> We've been running our generator sparingly, but seriously, our neighbors have had theirs on all day long. Okay, and even if you make your brush strokes all over the map, getting coverage all over the map, Come back at the very end and feather those back out. Super soft hand, just feathering out those brush strokes. Done. Boom. Add a little bit of water to my brush because I still have enough paint in there just to get these legs. Do you paint the back of your pieces? No, I don't. I actually wrote a blog post about that too. I'm going to give you my top three reasons why I do not paint the backs of pieces. Um, number one is who's going to see it. Unless I know that my piece is going to be out um, with all four sides exposed, you know, it's going to be a, um, I had a piece that went up against a stair railing one time, was a customer's piece. Or if it's a piece that just makes sense that it's going to be used with a set, all four sides exposed. And then I will paint the back. Um, but otherwise, who's gonna ever see it? So you're just really wasting paint by putting it back there on a side that's gonna go against the wall. Um, the other two. reason, <laughs> number two, the reason I don't paint it. On the backs of pieces, a lot of times there's identifying information. So this um, probably means, if I had to guess, that this is June 1st, 1970, a two drawer nightstand, if I had to guess. To translate this so usually the markings on the back of your piece mean something and I hate to cover those up because they tell the story of a piece 
Um, so if you looked up this line, um, these numbers would be relevant to that line. So that's the second reason I don't like to paint them. The third reason, go through your house, you guys, and look at the back of your factory finished pieces. Um, pull them out from the wall and look at how many brands don't refinish the backs of pieces. So why are we doing something as painters that even a manufacturer of furniture doesn't do? Most of, I mean, this is a nightstand right here and you can tell the back was finished. Um, I do like to finish though, right up to the edge of this, just so it has a nice clean edge. So this is all I will do is come here, there's a little hair in there, and I'll go right up to that edge so that you can't see turning this corner here that it's not all the way finished. Um, so what are the few exceptions to painting a back if I know that the piece is going to be used where you're going to see the back somehow, I will finish it. If the back is in really, really like bad shape, it just looks ugly, it's got no identifying information on it, it just would look better, then I will paint it just for cosmetics. But other than that, I, there's really no piece, there are no reason to paint the back of a piece. So that's as far as I go. I do get the inside of it really well. Like here, I've got the inside, inside, underneath, all that's painted. Now, what do you do as far as the glides? Do you wax them? I wax them. So I will put a coat of wax on here on this glide itself. And then I will also take the bottom of my drawer and, oh, this is metal. If it was wood on wood, wood on wood over time, um, it causes friction. So the wax just helps it glide all that much easier. So I'll put a coat on the underside of the drawer and a coat on the wood glide itself. This one's, um, I'm just going to wax that wood glide. So you guys, you heard some of my painting horror stories. You saw how I put a base coat and a second coat on. Um, and this is gonna be a really cute set that's gonna have minimal, minimal products used. A single color of paint, all distressed down to the white underneath. A little bit of gold gilding wax for the hardware and maybe on some of the accents, I'm not sure yet. Um, and it's gonna be a simple, clean, beautiful finish. How do you seal the paint when you're done? I'm gonna seal this with Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. I will wipe it on. Um, actually, you know what? I've been spraying my clear coats a lot, you guys. Um, I've been using the Wagner sprayer and I'll get to where I have, you know, three or four pieces completed and I will spray them all together at one time. Hmm. I'll take them out to my, or I'll say, Sean. Yeah, that's where I was getting with this. Oh, you <laughs> do it. Oh, that's so weird. For me. Hmm. Um, it's something that Sean can help with that um, saves me an immense amount of time. He's not comfortable with the, like, the artistic painting part. Um, so I do that and then he can come behind me with the sprayer and just spray, you know, three or four pieces at a time. But, but I always tell him not to spray my wood tops. The wood absorbs the clear coat from the sprayer differently and they usually come out gritty feeling. So I prefer to wipe the wood tops if it's wood stained. If it's painted, it's okay to be sprayed. But I do always um, wipe my clear coat on a wood stain. So anyway, I'm going to finish this up, you guys. Thank you so much. It's getting dark here in California. Wish me luck tonight. Um, we'll get the generator out and watch some Netflix with the kids. I think we're going out to dinner again. Um, wish us luck. But thank you guys so much for joining me, even in the dark, for the candlelight version of Painless Painting. Come back next Thursday. If I don't have power by then, I'm gonna be flipping a lid. Um, but I'll see you guys next week. Thanks.